So welcome. I've got Tanya Jafar. Uh, she is a graduate of the MS Kinesiology program at Point Loma Nazarene University. This you graduate 2017, am I correct? Yes. 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, I wanted to introduce yourself. Um, you know, you know, where'd you go to, for undergrad and, and graduate school, and what was your concentration and all that jazz? Yeah. So I'm Tanya. Um, I'm currently a biomechanist in the Clinical Biomechanics Laboratory at Naval Medical Center San Diego. I've been here since, uh, I think, August of 2014, so um, about six years now. Wow. Um, I went to undergrad at University of Southern California, um, mm -hmm. which I loved. Uh, I was a biomedical engineer um, undergrad with a mechanical engineering emphasis, and while I was there, I worked in uh, one of the biomechanics research labs uh, under Dr. Jill McNitt Gray. Awesome. And then once I got here uh, and worked uh, for a couple of years in the lab, I decided to pursue a master's degree at Point Loma um, doing the MS kinesiology program mm -hmm. uh, with an emphasis in sports performance. Awesome. Kind so, of my journey. No, that's, that's great. And when did you first kind of learn about the science of biomechanics? You've heard obviously of physics, chemistry, biology. As a high school student coming in or going into USC, was was biomechanics even on your radar? Um, actually, it was, but I was super lucky. In mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't lucky in how I fell into it, but I was lucky in the opportunities I got. So um, in high school, I played soccer pretty competitively, and I hurt my knee. I'd have knee surgery twice, um, and obviously that is super unfortunate, but I did play soccer with uh, one of my best friends now, um, whose mom is Dr. Jill McNitt Gray, um, and I chatted with her um, while I was injured and doing rehab, and she said, you know what, um, you seem like pretty interested in this, uh, why don't you come check out the lab and kind of see what we do. So I did sort of like a volunteer summer in her lab doing like hand point digitizing like old VHS videos wow. of volleyball players. And that was kind of like my intro into biomechanics. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, I love this. It's, I mean, I was doing the manual hard label mm -hmm. labor for PhD students, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the opportunity to kind of see um, different branches of uh, the performance side and the clinical side and injury prevention side, um, all of that, like I did get a very early exposure into that. Um, so I'm super grateful That's to awesome. have that opportunity. So wait a minute, you actually did the manual digitization for each frame of video? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> for, for those of you not familiar, I mean, motion capture right now is comple completely automatic. We're using three you know, markers that we place on the body, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that's the done behind the scenes, as Tanya knows, uh, through our software. But back in the day, we would take multiple views. I assume you use multiple views of, uh -huh. uh, of, of the uh, action, and we'd manually digitize. Uh, how many points was, uh, do you remember, that you oh, had to gosh. digitize? Just on the thigh, it was 9 to 12. And there was for each like, frame of data, right? Yes, each frame. So you had to identify each marker for each frame. And there, there was like a... I don't know, brute force sort of automation, but it never tracked perfectly over all the frames. So I was I was in the lab for quite some time. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so that was fun. It rarely does, but no, you're, you're right. You're actually very fortunate uh, to experience, number one, with Dr. Jill McNick Gray. I mean, come on, mm -hmm. I mean, she's, you know, she's a legend, if you will, in, in biomechanics, especially in sports biomechanics. So, so you went to USC. Um, did you do any kind of capstone and kind of projects while you were there in the lab? Um, no, I, I was part of the like women's research program there um, and really just kind of helped out a lot of the master's and PhD students with their own projects and kind of got exposed that way. Um, did some work uh doing force vector overlays for um, some of the paralympic uh, long jumpers because they had the relationship with the olympic training center down in chula vista here mm -hmm. um so that was kind of my main focus once i got into undergrad it was like uh interfacing with uh, that team awesome awesome so you graduated you moved down to san diego now you're at the naval medical center at bubble park in the clinical gait analysis lab can you kind of share with the world kind of your experience as a biomechanist there and some of the things that you've, some of the cool things that you've done so far? 
Yeah, sure. So I started as a research assistant here, um, really focusing on the clinical gate portion of it. So um, the lab started as uh, back in 2008 when it was like the height of the war. Um, and most of the focus was on gate analysis for service members who underwent amputation. Um, so a lot of it was just clinically tracking them throughout rehab, uh, making sure they're um, progressing the way we expect them to and meeting with um, their different care providers, like such as their physical therapists, their um, case managers, their orthopedic surgeons. And that's part of what I loved about working here was this um, holistic approach to everything for right. each patient. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I've been involved in a few different projects, um, such as a fault prevention project in which basically throw somebody on a treadmill and rip it from under them and train them pretty much to trust the other injured limb mm -hmm. to recover from those falls. And right now I am the lead biomechanist for uh, our running project, which again started with uh, service members at amputation, right. but we've kind of expanded the program for um, other clinical uh, evaluations for overground running and weightlifting and really any agility or weightlifting tasks they might want to do. Sure. That's awesome. So you're in direct contact with one number one with patients, with athletes, mm -hmm. as well as clinicians like physical therapists, ATs mm -hmm. and orthopedic surgeons. From your perspective, what, how do you think they value the, the utility of biomechanics, biomechanical data in, in, in their clinical practice? So I think um, it's an interesting conversation to have because especially for what you would consider like old school coaches or old school surgeons like there is a certain aspect of buy-in that you have to show like we can provide something that is of value to you and i think as biomechanists um a kind of behind the scenes job of what we can do to be a successful program is to synthesize the information we have um, to make it understandable and digestible and actually usable because you can't just walk into yeah. like a physical therapy clinic and say like here's some data if we pulled like look at all these graphs and sure, sure. Um, curves and whatever like that's not useful to anybody um, and it's nice to be an asset to different teams in that um, in that scenario where we have we have a wealth of data and um, figuring out how to make it as useful as possible um, to really progress care, I think, is just a huge benefit of being part of this team. So do you find yourself as a liaison or even like a translator of biomechanics data to, you know, kind of layman's terms and, and in an effort to have them appreciate the value of biomechanical data? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, especially in the hospital, we kind of try to make ourselves known as this like service to provide mm -hmm. like, if a doctor or surgeon or whatever is saying like, our patient is complaining of this sort of pain or like discomfort, or I think something's happening here, but I can't like get to it just mm -hmm. on a manual muscle test or um, any sort of diagnostic thing we can do and biomechanics um, allows for another avenue to kind of investigate those problems or diagnoses or maybe see something like the naked eye wouldn't be able to you know evaluate. That's awesome it's great that you're on the front lines and in many ways you perhaps uh, subconsciously you don't you don't realize what you're doing is you're promoting the science by mm -hmm. showing that value to clinicians and coaches who may not you know, understand the full breadth of what biomechanics can provide. Now, fast forward a little bit now, you're at Point Loma Nazarene University. You helped me out in the lab quite a bit. So definitely grateful for your time there. Can you share your thesis with the audience and, and with some of the things that you did? Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so my thesis was uh, foot strike patterns for patients with amputation and the effects on running. Um, so I definitely tied in what I learned at Point Loma versus like what I do here. And so that was uh, a really cool project for me to kind of get involved in and to get um, expertise from both sides to present. Um, but also at Point Loma, like I got a ton of different opportunities that I wouldn't have been able to 
do just on my own, like um, getting involved in baseball studies with you or um, learning about uh, just movement prescription and doing more of like the kinesiology, like focus side, which I didn't really get exposure to um, in undergrad. So um, having a blend of resources was super valuable going to that. That's awesome. Um, so we've got a number of students who are entering uh, as an undergrad, entering the first time in a biomechanics course or lab, as well as in, in the MS Kin program. What advice can you share with them that would benefit in their journey through this this new world of biomechanics for them? Yeah, um, I would say take every opportunity that is presented to you when you can, if you can. Um, there's just a wealth of different experiences uh, to be had, especially in biomechanics. And again, like me having the blend of the engineering side and the just kinesiology movement science side, um, it shows that for biomechanics, there are different approaches to address the same problem, but your best success and your best results are gonna be when you can take both of those sides. So really investing into um, areas that you might not have considered um, and really investigating and um, going into every every angle you can and I think biomechanics is cool and that you it's involved in so many different yeah. things that you don't think about and um, people I think have you know Nike and their sports performance mm -hmm. in their head like that's biomechanics but it's also like ergonomics, you don't think about it, but it's like the way you sit, the kinds of chairs you use, um, <laughs> like your posture at your computer. Uh, it's oh, just- I gotta fix my posture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just have to, you, if you kind of open your eyes to um, the different avenues in which the human body moves, it's the opportunities are endless for where this could be applied to. That's exciting. Um, I know that the National Biomechanics Day the, and, and that group, you know, they, they labeled biomechanics as the breakthrough science of the 21st century. And I totally agree with that, um, just simply because it's moving fast, as you know, with mm -hmm. the technology. Uh, what are some of the exciting things in biomechanics do you foresee in the near future? You can share with us. Um, absolutely <laughs> markerless data collection that's mm -hmm. going to be huge it's already being used as you obviously know um that you see i think seeing it in um other avenues other than that baseball or even mm -hmm. like the movie entertainment industry it's going to be a huge game changer especially for like in-game analysis of um different movements like i'd say a lot of let's say soccer specific acl research it's wow. hard to really um replicate any of that movement in the lab like game day scenarios like it, it's hard to get that and especially like markering people like you're never going to get like that organic movement but um yeah having markerless motion capture technology like embedded through stadiums and just having that wealth of right. data it's gonna be a huge game changer in both um performance analysis and hopefully potential uh, injury prevention. Yeah, this is pretty exciting. Um, this is kind of off the record, but uh, did you get a chance to sit in on the ASB uh, symposium on markerless technology? I think we had a patient during that time, so I'm going <laughs> to have to go back and look at that recording. You should. There's some great stuff there. Um, Jennifer Hicks out of Stanford shared some of the things that she's doing with uh, with uh, CNNs, with convoluted neural networks, to mm. identify kind of with markerless data, which is an iPhone, and you know multiple views and et cetera, et cetera. So, I, you know, I agree. I mean, if we can get to the point where we could uh, identify these biomechanical, okay, these kinematic and kinetic uh, patterns of soccer players or any athlete in their natural setting, mm -hmm. you're, you're right. It's a, it's a game changer. For yeah. Sure. Cool. Well, I, pr I appreciate your time. I know you're busy over there in the lab. You know, please give my regards to, to Trevor, JD, and all, all the crew there and keep, just keep it up. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having motivating. me today. <laughs> of course, anytime.